Good afternoon, Facebook Live. First, let me acknowledge the music. The music is from the album of famous Wilmington drummer, Jonathan W. Whitney, who in collaboration all the way back to 2016, chose five of my paintings and incorporated those paintings into that music you're hearing. There are 12 tracks on the album and five of the tracks are based on paintings, my paintings, so I'm very proud to share the music. It's Women's History Month and today we are celebrating Harriet Tubman's day. And just let me read a quotation. When I did my research, this did this uh, this one surprised me, this quotation. From the words of Harriet Tubman. Every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember you have within you the patience and the passion to reach for the stars even. Wow, how relevant is that? You have within you the patience and the passion to reach for the stars and change the world. Yes, Harriet Tubman, described as a gorilla, soldier, a warrior, a spy, a nurse, and she was the first woman soldier, black woman soldier in the United States. Champion, the champion, Harriet Tubman. And I guess you have seen the movie by now. If you haven't, you should try to see it. Her life story, and I've read as a historian, I've read the life story of many women but of all the women in history, Harriet Tubman stands out to me for her resilience, her courage, her determination, and what she did to free people who were in slavery. Her life, the exact date of her birth is not known. It's estimated she was born between 1820 and 1822 in the Dorchester County in Maryland. Well, let me get my chair. Yeah, I'm sharing a story. Uh, let me sit to share. Okay. Yes, she was born in Dorchester in Maryland. Born a slave. And at age five, she was rented out as a housemaid. Her resilience was spotted at age 12. At that age, she took up activism for a man who was being beaten by a slave master. She intervened, age 12. And she was hit in the head and badly injured. She carried that headache throughout her life. But she never gave up. She continued the, the fight. And it, um, to, you know, these are my fashion glasses to read. I have to read, so let's put on the reading glasses. How about that? Okay. Yes, if you're just joining me, good afternoon. Today, is Harriet Tubman's day. And that image behind me represents a history which is diverse. Because there is Thomas Garrett featured in that painting. And we will learn later why. But what is so intriguing to me is that two people, 
Back in the days of slavery, in that era, banded together to be station masters, to help to hide those slaves, to free slaves, Harriet Tubman and Thomas Garrett. So back to her life story. If you're just joining me, recognize the music. It is Jonathan Whitney's album in conjunction with my paintings. Yes, at age 12, she decided to take up activism, challenge a planter, not a planter, a slave master, who was abusing a slave. And later on, she became a champion. She was even a part of the abolitionist movement. She escaped, even left her husband behind because he didn't want to go. So she left, left him behind and took two of her brothers. She had eight siblings. She took two of her brothers with her. And she chose to go to Canada. Why not? Why not the U.S.? Well, she didn't trust the U.S to take care of, of the escaped slaves. So she took them to Canada. The Underground Railroad Movement, for which she's known, was not actually being started by her, but became a powerful vehicle of freeing slaves. And physically, it was not underground. It was not a railroad. It was a movement. It was a movement by which different people, different places were used to hide slaves and to take care of their needs until they were freed. And they had to track, you know, they'd wake up early in the morning and take them north all the way up to Canada. So that movement developed into a very, very powerful movement. And the Quakers, thanks to the Quakers, they were very involved. We have right here in Wilmington a place called the Meeting House. And Thomas Garrett, with whom Harriet Tubman collaborated, lived here in the city of Wilmington, Delaware, on Fifth Street. Uh, as a historian, I lament the fact that they tore his house down. They, they should have preserved that, that home of Thomas Garrett on Fifth Street. Yes, two people of diverse background came together for a movement to free the slaves. This is a prolific story. So they were called con conductors. Conductors, station masters. So Tubman and Garrett were station masters. Found a place where they could hide the slaves. And there were many people involved in that underground railroad movement, black and white. It was a diverse movement. Slaves were hid in private homes, in school houses, and all those places were called stations. So Harriet Tubman carried that movement and freed over 300 slaves, took them to the north. And if you're just joining me, welcome. We are celebrating Harriet Tubman's day. To me, the one of the most powerful women in history. And my, she's my Shiro. Known as a spy, yes. And her work as a nurse was profound. She used herbal treatment for the slaves. So she was a nurse, she was a spy, a scout, a guerrilla soldier, and became the first 
black woman to serve in the military. Yes, a powerful story. A very, very powerful story. So yes, today we celebrate Harriet Tubman. And here in the city of Wilmington, Delaware, the city established recognition for Harriet Tubman and Thomas Garrett. There is a park on the riverfront, which is the Tubman Garrett Park. And the statues of Harriet Tubman and Thomas Garrett are there. And if you live in the city of Wilmington, visit the Tubman Garrett Park. Well, we, it's coming up to spring. That's a great place to go. Visit that park. Celebrate history. Our history should be celebrated. Women, women celebrate history. Know your history. Well, you have to know it before you can celebrate it. Teach it to the young girls. Teach it to the young girls. And let me show this work of art here. It is so relevant to teaching history to young girls. It's one of my pieces titled Mentoring the Sisters. It is our duty as women who have accomplished to take on the task of helping young girls and young women, helping them to succeed. Welcome, if you're just joining, it's Harriet Tubman's Day and the Faith Gallery, located at 227 North Market Street in Wilmington, Delaware, is more than a gallery. La Faith Gallery is a vision center. And I'm the owner. I'm a historian today. I wear many hats today. I'm a student of history. And Harriet Tubman, of all the women in history, she stands out to me as the most famous for what she did. I did go through her life story, early life story. From age 12, she started to be an activist. Yes, yeah, she was part of the anti-slave movement that led up to the abolition. She was part of the women's suffrage participated, yes, with those great women who were fighting for women's right. She was one of them. She died on the 10th of March, 1913, the exact date of her birth, not known as estimated. She was born between 1820 and 22. She had eight siblings. And her first move, when she started the trek to take those slaves, she started with two of her brothers, and she made numerous trips to the north and came back to the south to get those slaves, to free them. Yes, she was a champion of the underground railroad movement which literally was not a physical underground. It was not a railroad as we know it. It was a movement, an establishment of hideouts where they provided stations, where they hid the slaves overnight and woke up early, four o'clock or thereabout, and took them, trekked them to north. Look at my painting here. This is the painting to celebrate that this painting and I'm trying to get it in a museum and um, you know I have a problem with a lack of vision of our local museums why wouldn't this painting be in a museum I uh, I've tried many times to get it in a museum a friend of mine even planned to write a grant to a foundation to get the money to purchase and to donate. And the museum threw cold water on it. Shame on them. Shame on them not to want to preserve and collect history. Okay, I'm not going to name the, the museum. 
But there we go. Harriet Tubman, Thomas Garrett. Freeing the slaves. Two people of diverse background coming together for a cause. And that is why when I had my um, exhibition last month, it was titled Black History Diverse Perspectives, because that's pretty diverse. Now, the part of Harriet Tubman's life that impresses me, I would say the most, is the song which she loved. Her favorite song. Disclosure, I am not a singer. I'm good with my brushes and paints, etc. But I love music and I love to dance. You know me as a dancer. Yes, they call me the dancing artist. But singing artist, well, I don't think I've earned a title. However, however, I'm going to sing Harriet Tubman's favorite song. It, um, back in the days, they were called Negro Spirituals. Yes, Negro Spirituals. That's the name that was given to those songs. And Harriet Tubman's favorite song was Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. I'm going to tell you something about the symbolism of the song. But let me attempt mm -hmm. to sing it. As I said, I'm not a singer. But I'm going to try. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming south to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming south to carry me home. I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? Coming south to carry me home. A band of angels coming after me, coming south to carry me home. If you get there before I do, coming south to carry me home. Tell all my friends that I'll be coming too, coming south to carry me home. Now, my dad was a preacher. And, you know, back in the days, Negro spirituals were considered so very important. All families would just delve in them and sing. And the way I learned the song, there's one part of the song that I learned. There's one word which, in actuality, wasn't the right word. I learned it as coming forth. So it's swing, I learned it this way, swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. However, the meaning of the song, as far as um, Harriet Tubman was concerned, she was taking the slaves from the south to the north. Make sense? So when they sang, and you see, they had one up on those slave masters. The slave masters thought they were smart, but there were many times when the slaves outsmarted them. Those slaves used their good common sense and their symbols and their messages that they would communicate through song. So when the song said, coming south to carry me home, it meant that they were going down to the south because slavery had been abolished in the north. And they were taking the slaves from the south to the north. And the band of angels coming after me. That's the other slaves who were left there. No wonder Harriet Tubman is called the Moses of that anti-slavery movement. As in the biblical Moses who led the people across the Red Sea. And you know, you remember how some of those people complained? They gave Moses a lot of trouble. Same, same here, Harriet Tubman, but she carried a gun. And when they would not um, abide by it, she would, you know, threaten them, yes. 
And she never lost one. She took them. And those who were reluctant to go, she, she demanded, come along. Come to freedom. And they were freed. So swing low. Sweet chariot. I love that song. I love it so very much. And I love it even more when I learned of the symbolism of it as it relates to Harriet Tubman's movement. So, we are celebrating today Harriet Tubman's day. The 10th of March. She passed 10th of March in 1913. There is a museum in Dorchester, Maryland, her hometown here, and she had lived somewhere in New York too. We need to collect symbolisms. We need to teach the children of the next generation facts of history. Teach them that yes, even back into slavery, people of different color, not everybody was prejudiced. That there were people out there during the days of slavery who worked together that Harriet Tubman, a black woman, worked with Thomas Garrett, a Caucasian man, and they worked together for the common good, for the cause of freeing the slaves. How many children out there know that? They, we are shortchanging our students. They're not, the curriculum has been, what should I say? I was a teacher, I'm still an educator. They skim and they select portions of history to put in the school curriculum. So anything that may be controversial like Harry Tubman and her gun, they're probably not going to teach that in, in certain schools. They probably don't want to teach that. Shame on the school system. Shame on them not teaching diversity. It is our diversity that makes us a strong nation. And ironically, it is our diversity that keeps tearing us apart. And that is why the essence of my work is about diversity. And as I say that, let me take you over to my diversity wall. It's very important. History and diversity are very, very important to me. So, on this wall, over here, are images, and one in particular, this one. The melting pot versus the salad bowl. And that is my signature piece. That is a work of art over 28 years, which has been the most important piece. And yes, through that slave history that we were talking about and Harriet Tubman and the movement, out of that type of history, we developed a diverse society and culture. So whereas in the early stages we were conceived to be America, the great melting pot, where it was assumed we were homogenous, and we should just all get along as one happy family. Not so. America is a salad bowl of cultures where each ingredient adds flavor to the culture and should be respected. Well, first understood, because you can't respect what you don't understand. Yes, each individual or ethnicity that makes up our salad bowl of culture should be first understood, respected, and valued. And we should move away from tolerance and assuming we're all the same to acceptance, accepting our differences and knowing that our differences make us a strong nation. That's another signature piece of my work. It's titled Diversity. So yes, as you know, 
when you watch a broadcast or you watch anything out there, they don't just talk, talk, there is commercial. They take a break for commercial. I am not a motivational speaker, though it appears so. You know, when I come over, people love to watch my video for that aspect of it. But bottom line is, I am a business owner. I am the owner of a business titled the Fake Gallery Vision Center. And it's not just a gallery. It is a vision center. The vision comes alive here every day. What I just presented, that's part of my vision to educate our community about history, to get people to understand our differences and to respect. All of that is important. However, I am sitting in this gallery, or standing now, with an inventory that spans 28 years, 1992 to the present. Each month, I take my exhibitions down. I put them in storage. I have so much in storage, I have to be taking some to my home to store, because it's just a lot. I have 20 different themes of work in 20 eight um, years that I see one of my art patrons out there. Okay, Brian, thank you. I want to thank all my art patrons over the year, years. All those people who have opened their minds and their hearts to accepting diversity, to understanding the value of art, and to collect art. I want to thank every one of them and those who have not yet gone there or come to the gallery i invite you to come along to celebrate your culture and to to get some work of art to represent our diversity yes we should when i walk into my bank as i was there this morning i looked at, i said look i was there during the month of February, I looked around, there was nothing on the wall that represented art in our city. And 70% of the population of our city is black and black history and nothing on the wall. This morning, I took the challenge to set up an appointment to meet with the bank manager. It is Women's History Month. Where is the women art in your place? Why don't you put some art? I have been with this, your company for 38 years. I've been banking here. When I come in, I want to look at the walls and I want to see art that represents the community. That is called advocacy. And I received the Governor's Award for the Arts in the year 2014 and that award was for advocacy. Proof is right here. I always have to go back to the proof. There we go. Governor's Award for the Arts by the Delaware Division of the Arts. See the word there? Advocate. So I am an advocate for other artists. There are too many starving artists, artists in our city. Because, um, and it's not a money issue. We are the diamond state. Yeah, there is old money in our town. It's not, it's not, it's not a money issue. I always say it. You come to my gallery, five dollars. Look, you can get something in this gallery for five dollars. I'll show you in a moment. There we go. What it says there? Single note card, $5. A pack of four note cards, $20. Look at that. Look at the array of diversity. Look, take every subject. Health, women, racial harmony, the old Woolworth, and you remember that old Woolworth and Market Street right there? Wine. Social justice. Again, children, united we stand. Diversity. One love. 
Music. Challenges of life, curse of life, and how you deal with challenges. Well, this is from the last season. Hanukkah. Yeah, I celebrate every culture in my gallery. Kwanzaa, right there. It's all there. And now, take you to my goodie bench, right here. On this bench. Well, first, let me put this piece as a center stage, since we just finished talking about that. We ju I just finished giving a presentation on Harriet Tubman and Thomas Garrett. This small work of art framed right here. All it cost is $20. So what I'm saying is that these works of art should be on the walls of your office or your home. How can our children learn? Visuals are very, very important for children to learn. Diversity, that should be on every child's wall. Maya Angelou and Still I Rise. Or current, first, African-American, female, Vice President, right there, I have it all here. Wilmington, a place to be somebody, and I make it affordable. So, again, it's not an issue of price. How do you acquire the wealth? Because art is wealth. It is more than beauty on the wall. It says so right here on my poster. I teach a class. Teaching people to collect art is called Art is Wealth. How do you collect my work? If you live in the city of Wilmington, Delaware, you come on over to the gallery. Come on over to visit Lafayette Gallery. And the gallery is located. Let me put the address. I think I did put the phone number. Okay. Gallery is located 227 North Market Street here in Wilmington, Delaware. And the phone number to make an appointment, because we don't take walk-in, you make an appointment to come in, 302-656-6786. The gallery is open from Tuesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. I'm going to extend the hours. It's getting lighter in the evenings now, so I may even go up all the way up to 6 o'clock when it gets brighter. So come over. I can work with your time, too. You just call me up, and then I will schedule time to meet your needs. So you, um, if you're out of state, I will ship your work free of cost. Any state, anywhere in the United States. Go online, www.lafaitegallery.com to purchase art online with free shipping. And then my products. I carry a range of products in the gallery. Mugs, t-shirts, name it. In a moment, I'll show you. Those you can get at a website called fineartamerica.com. I put a link there on the page on this screen. And they're the ones who make my mugs, my t-shirts, tote bags. They make it all. The exhibition, which was opened last Friday, featuring four fabulous women, the Fab Four, that exhibition is on. Yeah, we had a, a fairly good turnout, but a lot of people haven't seen the exhibition. It is on through the month of March. So come to visit. That's one of my emerging artists, and she works in roses, handcraft roses, and she took on to representing history. Starting with Shirley Chisholm over there, and she did it in the context of those who paved the way for others. So Shirley Chisholm paved the way for Madame, Vice President Kamala Harris, right there. Maya Angelou paved the way for Amanda Gorman. What a great philosophy and great work. Great work. And great prices, too. That's the price of them. 
The next artist, she's also emerging, and these are artists that I have mentored over the last two months. I mentor the sisters. Kendra Dupree, she works in acrylic, and she finishes with resin. Look at that stunning piece there. Love, joy, peace. More of her work. Let me go to a point where you can see them better. Yes, some stunning works of art right there. For Kendra Dupree, and what is even more stunning are the prices. Look at those prices for original works of art. At the end of the month, I don't want the artist to come in to take them down and take them back home. Come out and purchase the art. If you're out of state, I am doing virtual shopping, FaceTiming, and you choose your pieces and I mail them to you in three days with free shipping. Look at that piece there. It glows. It is finished with resin, another resin piece. Beautiful works. And my third artist, who is a curator of the gallery, has been curating for the last um, six years, Joe Redbird. That's her right there. She comes in every month to change my exhibitions. She's incredible. Her style is using trees. She can use a, a tree to create any theme, any theme out there. Joe uses a, a tree to create it. She has three beautiful daughters, and these paintings are reflecting, portraying her three daughters. They are legacies. These are not for sale. I'll show you what she has for sale. Look at that installation piece over there, again featuring trees. Beautiful works. Not for sale, the bigger ones, but these are for sale. She has them here for sale. Look at that vibrant piece with a guitar. Look at that price. These are sold through the gallery. If you want to purchase these, you call me at 302-656-6786 or go online to my website, www.lefaitegallery.com. Fill out my contact form and request a face time virtual shopping. And then you can do that. Here's another stunningly beautiful piece with a guitar. And there we go. Look at that. But look at these. Her note cards. Only $4. The note cards of the originals. $4. That's all it costs. Her prints. 12 by 18 prints. $20. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not a price issue. If you're not collecting art, it has nothing to do with price. It has to do with values and we need to change our value set. Change our value set and appreciate art and support local artists. So there are four artists exhibiting. I am the fourth one. You have seen a lot of my work. That's why I left mine for the last. Those are my fabulous hats. Easter is coming up. These are fabulous paintings of hats. And for a renowned artist, and that's the price? I am wondering if it's correct. It is, because I want you to collect. So I make the prices very affordable. Women balance in the world. Elegance women over there. My signature reaching for the star. And let me go uh, a little closer so people can see the prices of these. But these are collectible pieces. So reaching for the stars. That is a price. Yes, because it goes with my fame. That's the price right there. But I do have limited edition prints if you want to acquire them. My famous melting pot frame, it's been auctioned. Minimum bid. And you can bid by going to my website. Go to www.lafittegallery.com. In the comment section, there's a contact form. Um, indicate you want to bid on this work of art. Framed as it is. That's the price, but you, we, your bid begins right here. And if you are the only bidder, that's what you pay for it. Same for that one, the same thing. Okay, so then I encourage you to, for the month of March, to be proactive to support artists.
Art appreciates, appreciate art, is my message. I encourage you to come out to visit the exhibition before um, the end of the month. Come to the Fake Gallery, 227 North Market Street in Wilmington, Delaware. Call me to schedule an appointment, error code 302-656-6786. And today is Harriet Tubman's Day. Collect something. Collect something as a memorabilia. Here's a beautiful double matted piece right there. Harriet Tubman, double matted. And a small piece, making it affordable. That's for the war and to introduce your children to history. Yeah, and all this piece costs $20. That's the cost. And that one, that's the cost of that. So thank you very much for watching. And have a great day and be safe. Thank you.